Hello and welcome to module two, OSBF configuration, single area, of course, area zero. All right, we're going to go back and forth between notes and the, um, and the slides. So whatever you see on the screen right now, I want you to write that down. So this way I summarized everything in the chapter and makes it a little bit easier to understand. So please, by the way, when you are taking your notes, not only that you're going to submit them, but this will be a good resource or reference for you when you are taking an exam for or if you're taking the CCNA or taking any of the exams um, on the Cisco Medicaid. All right, so one of the first thing you need to know is routers. Okay, so going in here, and I just want to take a look at this. Um, routers, let me just bring this up a little bit. So this is a multi-access network. Why do we call it multi-access? Because all routers on the Ethernet ports are connected to a switch. So when we are in here, these routers are going to elect um, a, a designated router and a backup designated router. Okay, so I'm going to just go back to my notes. So, but routers, the first thing they have to do is they have to create a router ID. A router ID is nothing but an IP address. So how do OSBF routers create a router ID? The first thing they, are, they can do is by typing it statically. If, they, if, if, if the administrator did not configure a router ID on a router, then the second thing that router is going to do, he's going to take a look at if there's a loopback address that's configured, and it's going to pick the highest loopback address, you know, interface loopback zero, and you typed in an IP address. And the router ID, by the way, is um, an IP address. Now, if there is no loopback address is configured on the router, then the router has no choice but to go to the highest active um, interface, which means an interface that has an IP address and it has a no shutdown on it, right? So one way or another, the router must have a router ID. It is best and preferable that you type it in. You statically type it in as an administrator so you know exactly who, who has the router ID because the router ID, as it says right here, the router ID is used for to elect a designated router and a backup designated router. And also it is used to, when you are creating your database descriptor, description database. So it's a very important um, ID. All right, so... Here's an example of uh, a, a route, um, OSBF configuration. So you go to the config mode, you go to this router. Uh, let me just go back to the slides for a little bit. If you go to router one, and then what you to enable um, the routing protocol, you just say you go to the config mode and you type router OSBF 10. 10 is a process ID. Uh, the process ID is a, is local significant, which means that all routers can have different local means within the router itself. Router two, router three can can have the, a different number in here. Typically, with three, and I wrote number ten, but typically you write OSPF one or on all the routers. But I'm just letting you know if you wrote OS uh, router OSPF two on router two, three on router three, it doesn't make any difference. OSPF routing protocol will be enabled when you type router OSPF and a pro any any process ID number. Okay. Um, the other thing that you need to know, then you type in network. This is the network that you want to advertise to all your neighbors. So in this case, this guy will advertise 172.16.10 slash 24. He wants to send it to everybody to let him to let everybody know. The network 172.16.10 is attached to them. So, so everybody will know that and they'll put it, put it in their routing table, right? That's what that means. So, um, and now instead of writing the slash, uh, which in this case it's slash 20, well, this one is slash 24. This one is slash 26. This is called, this number with 0000.63 is called a wild card. So you can't write 192 and I'm, I'm advertising 192 and 0 with 255.255.255.192. .255 .255 you have to write the wild card when you are configuring OSPF. How do you calculate this number? This is really like the inverse of the slash. 
it's the slash but it's an opposite way how you get it you write well i just showed you right here you write four 255s and you subtract slash 26 which is what this network is it was slash 26 right so here's slash 26 255 minus 255 is zero 255 minus 255 zero 255 255 zero 255 minus 192 is 63 so that's how you get the wildcard so instead of writing slash 26 you write zero 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 63 okay it's called the wild card all right we'll discuss more of this in class then you must write what area you are in and if it's the fir very first ospf area then you have to write area zero it has to be the backbone area all right so when you do that by the way so you're you're going to advertise out of every single interface your ospf but the problem is your lan is on this side right so an ospf updates is going to start coming in into the lan and that's going to create traffic for all the users so what do we do we type the command we go to we type passive interface g00 which means i do assuming g00 is on this side right the assuming is saying that i i want you to advertise my network this network that i just did but i don't want any updates coming in here so passive interface g00 assuming that this is g00 will advertise the network but it will prevent ospf updates from coming into the LAN to create traffic all right um so and that's it really for advertisement and then you can advertise anything else you want you type exit you can create a loopback address like this one for example give it an ip address and when you write quad 255s that means this is just an interface and you can go to interface gz you, by the way you can also go to the g0 type ip ospf 10 area zero if you type this in that means you advertise in the network and a passive network has already been taken care of you don't have to do anything you don't have to type in this command you just need to do enable the routing give it the router id and you can skip these two and just go to each interface and type this right much easier that way maybe i guess so type ip ospf the process id and area zero as if you type these two commands so per interface is much probably easier if you want to do that all right so um that explains everything else so please write all of this down and the slash 32 and configure ospf to an interface you can do that right here as you can see all right so now i want to discuss the priority number well let's go back in here so before you do anything else what the routers do is they will uh make an id right a router id okay a router id and assuming you did not configure it so what you're going to do is everybody let's assume you can fit you configured it and this one got one 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 two 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 three 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 then the routers need to elect a designated router so we can send all of our networks to it okay all of our updates to to that designated router now what we do is we have um each router will have a priority number the routers when they pass router id before once they get the what they do is they send the priority numbers to each other the router with the highest highest priority number will win, will win the election and be elected as the designated router and everybody will send their updates to them okay uh, the priority number equal to one by default okay so if you want you can create this guy give him a higher priority number and when we pass the priority numbers to each other we'll see that he has a higher priority than one then he'll become the designated router okay um what happens if you leave everybody with the default priority number one right and you don't do anything then the routers will do will use the highest router id whoever has the highest router id will win the election in this case he has the highest router id and he wins it right 
But if he has a higher priority number, he would have won the election. And he becomes the designated router, and then all routes will be sent to him, right? And then you'll send the routers back to him. Now, if this is if you don't do anything, he becomes the router, uh, the designated router, because his IP address is 3333, his router ID, and he has a lower router ID, right? Now, remember, every router has to have a router ID. So the router ID, if you remember when we talked about that earlier just now, is if you don't statically configure it, ultimately it's going to become the highest active interface. So this interface, if it's higher, it probably an IP address, it'll become the active, let's say 192, 168 is higher than 176. He'll become the active, uh, that will be his router ID and he'll win the election because the priority numbers are the same, right? So the best thing to do is uh, configure the router ID on the interface that you want to become the designated router and then start the election, right? And we'll talk that, about that in a minute. So the designated router is important. And the next highest, of course, will be the backup designated router. All right. So um, how do you configure? Uh, so to make, a, to make a modified router ID priority number, take effect, router must be reloaded, or you got to type this command. So after you assign the router priority number, you got to go to the router and then type in, clear IP OSBF process. So on all the routers, starting with the one where the highest priority you set. By the way, you set the highest priority on an interface, right? Once you clear the process ID, then everybody will see that he has a higher priority number and he wins, right? Or you can start reloading the router. That's probably too much. But you have to start reloading the router, starting with the ones that you configured with the highest router uh, with the highest priority. By the way, the highest priority priority is 255. The lowest could be zero. Why would you give one a zero priority number? Let's say I don't want R2 to become a, uh, a designated router. I'm going to configure this interface with priority equal to zero, leave everybody else default. I don't care about anybody else getting to be a designated router except R2. So if I want that, I'll make this a zero. Right. If I want to make it the um, the designated router, I'll put it two fifty five. Okay. If somebody else comes back in after he was a designated router, and the network has converged, which means they already have a designated router and a backup. When he comes back, even if he has a higher priority or higher ID, he just join in and he becomes DER others. Because the only way to start a new election is to clear the OSPF process. Okay? And that's what this says. Okay, so this is what you... Now, in a P2P network, what you do is you type inter, interface G00 and you say IP OSPF point to point. Which means if you have no switch in here directly connected, like we've always been doing, right? With a zigzag. There's no designated router needed or backup because by default, they're going to start doing that. And you don't want to create a lot of traffic for nothing because they're only two directly connected to each other. So what you do is you go to the interface and you type IPO, SPF network point to point. All right. So we'll stop right here and then we'll talk about the rest uh, on the next video. So write up all these notes that I just told you and I'll see you on the next video.